good morning. I'm still pretty all aglow, really, from the weekend. We had such a wonderful All Saints service at church on Sunday, and then the trunk or treat, and again, a huge thanksgiving to everybody who worked so hard to make that uh, go so well. If you uh, watch uh, Monday's video, you can see some scenes from our trunk or treat. Uh, and then this morning when I got up and was doing my daily prayer time, today's uh, lectionary passage is from Hebrews, and it reflects our Sunday school lesson from Sunday, where we talked about the temple, and we talked about Jesus's uh, role in the temple, and how we find Jesus as the new temple of God. And in Hebrews 9, we get uh, a passage that talks about that some, and so let me share that passage with you passage with you. It's Hebrews 9, and I'll be beginning with the 24th verse. For Christ didn't enter the earthly version of the holy place. He entered the place itself and offered himself to God as the sacrifice for our sins. He doesn't do this every year as the high priest did under the old plan with blood that was not their own. If that had been the case, he would have had to sacrifice himself repeatedly throughout the course of history. But instead, He sacrificed himself once and for all, summing up all the other sacrifices in this sacrifice of himself, the final solution of sin. Everyone has to die once, then face the consequences. Christ's death was also a one-time event, but it was a sacrifice that took care of sins forever. And so, when he next appears, the outcome for those eager to greet greet him is precisely salvation. What the author in Hebrews is reminding us of is that holy of holies in the temple. And uh, if you haven't uh, seen uh, the Sunday School lesson, I invite you to go back and look at that. I have some pictures in there and actually a little bit of video, an artist rendering of what the temple would have looked like. The holy of holies was this 30-foot cube, square foot cube, uh, inside the temple an open cube, of course. It had the Ark of the Covenant in it. It had a couple of cherubim over over the Ark, guarding the Ark. And once a year on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, a priest would go into the Holy of Holies to make atonement for the people. And that's what the passage is referring to when it says Jesus died and then he goes into, uh, he, he dies and he doesn't have to continually die year after year after year as uh, was the old way. But instead it says when Jesus enters the holy place as our high priest, He enters and once and for all, he takes care of sin. If you are from Tennessee, you have grown up, no doubt, seeing painted on barns and elsewhere, Sea Rock City all over everywhere. Uh, Growing up in South Carolina, if you're running up and down I-95 everywhere, there are these signs telling you about south of the border, uh, a great big gas station type thing, uh, complex uh, just south of the North Carolina border in, uh, in South Carolina. Um, Even before then, I can remember going down uh, not even major interstates and seeing signs all along the way uh, uh, telling you to get closer and closer to Stuckey's. And in a sense, uh, that's what this passage is saying is that all of those priestly acts, once a year going in and making atonement, an atonement with blood that was blood of an animal and not blood of the priest, that was like a signpost along the way uh, saying uh, the once and for all is coming. We're getting there. We're not there yet. But once you get to that place, whether it's Rock City or uh, south of the border or Stuckey's, you're there and you don't have to do it anymore. You have been there. You are there. That's what it's saying is now that Jesus has come, he doesn't have to do this repeat the sacrifice year after year after year. All those other sacrifices were the signposts leading up to that. And this once and for all event uh, in one way can be seen like a marriage. Uh, uh, we know that not all marriages survive until death do us part. And yet we know that very few and hopefully almost nobody stands in front of the pastor or the judge or whoever uh, hoping that marriage will only last a little bit. You want the marriage to be a once for all of it. I'm getting married to this one person once and we will be married till death do us part. I mean, you don't have to come back every year or every six months or whatever and get married again. Now, we may have a renewal of vows or whatever. That's fine. But we, we already are married. That's what this is telling us. And so then at the end, it says that so when Christ comes again, it isn't to make Make sacrifices for sin again, but actually it is to gather up all of his people. It is precisely, as Eugene Peterson translates it the way that I said, uh, but what I read this morning, precisely for salvation. And so a picture, if you will, as I did this morning in my 
Bible study time, Jesus uh, walking up those steps, uh, not of the temple, but actually the steps into heaven and going into that holy of holy places, the place where God resides. And once and for all, sin is vanquished, sin is taken care of, and Jesus has done what we need for Jesus to do. And we await his return to bring us back to him and to God to make all things new again. We await that. Uh, and that is wonderful good news. And so on this day, be aware that not only do we await the second coming of Jesus, but through the Holy Spirit, God is with us. Amen.